Hello, welcome to Prezium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 15 of ASP.NET Grid View tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about deleting data from Grid View using object data source control. Let's understand this with an example. In SQL Server, I have this table TBL employee with some sample data. We want to display this data within a grid view control and we should be able to delete it from there using object data source control. So since we want to achieve this using object data source control, obviously we need you know the respective data access layer which is going to return this data back to the application. So obviously the first step is to create employee data access layer. Remember the table is you know the table is containing employee related information. So let's go ahead and build employee data access layer. Okay, so let's add this class file employee data access layer.cs to our project. So to Visual Studio, let's go ahead and add a class file. And I'm going to call this class file as employee data access layer.cs. Now look at this. Uh, since we want to display employee related information, look at the table. We have employee the name, gender, and city columns. So to represent each employee, we need a class with these properties, you know, the column names as properties. So let's go ahead and create that employee class. So I'm going to create a class here, public class, and let's call it employee. And this class is going to have the following properties employee ID, name, gender, and city. I have this already typed just to save some time in typing. So all these are auto-implemented properties. So I have this employee class. Now obviously to, to retrieve that data and display it in the grid view control using object data source control, we need a method which is going to return list of employees. So I'm going to have this method public and I want this method to return a list of employee objects and I'm going to call this get all employees. So what is this method going to do? It's going to connect to the database, you know, execute a query, you know, select star from TBL employees against this uh, table, retrieve all the rows and then for each row create an employee object and then add it to a list and return it back to whoever is going to call this. Okay, so pretty simple ADO.NET code. So let me copy this and paste it there and then we'll go over it. So if you look at this uh, function, what it is doing, first of all, let's get rid of these uh, uh, compilation errors. We need to import some ADO.NET namespaces. So system.data and we also need system.data.sql client and system.configuration. Now, all these are ADO.NET namespaces. So if you're new to ADO.NET, we already have a video series recorded on ADO.NET videos. Uh, please watch that tutorial. All right, so what is this method doing? Pretty simple. We are creating you know, uh, a list of employee object, and then uh, we are reading the connection string from web.config file. Using that connection string, we are creating a SQL connection object, and then we are preparing a SQL command object all we are doing here is select star from TBL employee. So we are going to retrieve all the rows from that uh, table using, and we are execute, We are going to execute this command using this connection object, uh, open the connection, execute the command, and then whatever rows we get back, we loop through each row. Look at what we are doing. We are creating an employee object, and then we are retrieving the employee ID and populating that with the employee ID property of the employee object, similarly name, gender, and city. And then we are adding that employee object to that list. So finally, what we are doing after we finish looping through each row, we are returning that list back to the caller. So if you look at the return type of this method, it's a list of employees. And list employees is of type list of employee. And finally, this method is returning a list of employees back. So simple, straightforward, static method, get all employees. So let's actually convert this into static method. All right, so with this object, we should be able to retrieve and display data in the grid view control, which is going to be pretty straightforward. So let's drag and drop a grid view control and an object data source control onto the web farm. So that's the grid view control. Let's auto format that. Let's choose brown sugar as the scheme. Let's drag and drop an object data source control and configure that as well. So object data source control, configure that, 
choose your business object. Now look at this. For some reason, it doesn't show the employee data access layer class here. That's because after we have coded that class, we haven't compiled the solution. So you need to compile your project once. So control shift B to build the project. On the status bar, you can see build succeeded. Now let me go back to webform1.aspx and click on configure data source. Now we should see our business object here. So demo.employee data access layer. Demo is the namespace. The class is employee data access layer. Click next. On, on the select tab, we should see our method get all employees, which is going to return a list of employees. And I'm going to click finish now. OK, so let's associate this object data source control with this grid view control. So object data source one. Now look at this. We only have a select method. That's why I don't have enable deleting option you know, in this grid view tasks pane. OK, now let's go ahead. So obviously now with this, if we run the project, uh, it's going to show that employee related data within the grid view control. So object reference, that's because I have a different connection string in web.config file. So let's change the connection string. So within web.config file, the connection string is db connection string. Let me copy that and paste that in our employee data access layer. All right. So now if we run, we should be able to display the employee related data within the grid view control. OK, so, so it's still trying to connect. So there we go. We have the employee data there. Now let's go ahead and add, since we want to enable the grid view to delete data, we should have a method that can delete data. You know, we give it an employee ID and that should be able to delete a record with that employee ID because Look at this. When I run this, you know, it's going to list all the employees. Actually, let's go to the web form and then run it now. It's going to list all the employees. And then we are going to have a delete button next to this employee ID with another uh, column. When I click the delete button, you know, we should delete the employee with ID is equal to one. So obviously here, employee ID is the primary key. So we need a method which is going to take in employee ID as the parameter and delete that row. OK, so let's go to the employee data access layer. Now I'm going to have another method here. And that's also going to be a static method, public static. Since this is going to be you know, a method which is going to delete a row, you know, it's not going to return anything. The return type is going to be void. I'm going to call this delete employee. And obviously, we need to pass in a parameter. I'm going to pass in employee ID as the parameter. So what should this method do? This method should connect to the database and then execute a command delete from TBL employee where employee ID is equal to whatever we are passing in. OK, so obviously we need uh, you know, the ADO.NET code which is capable of doing that. So let me copy and paste this there and then we'll go over that code. So if you look at this code, what we are doing, again, the same idea. We are reading the connection string, preparing the SQL connection object, and preparing the SQL command. Look at SQL command. What are we doing here? We are saying delete from TBL employee, where employee ID is equal to at employee ID. Instead of dynamically concatenating uh, you know, strings to build our queries, we are using parameterized queries here, which is going to avoid a SQL injection attack. So if you're new to SQL injection attack, please watch the video on SQL injection attack. Uh, so this kind of parameterized queries are going to prevent a SQL injection attack. So what are we doing? Delete from TBL employee where employee ID is equal to at employee ID. That's our parameter. So obviously, we will have to supply a value for that parameter. And where do we get that value from for this parameter? Whatever is being passed into this method, the employee ID. That's going to contain the value. OK, so we are, we are passing that as a value to this parameter. And then finally, adding that parameter to the command object. Open the connection, execute non-query. Since this is a delete operation, obviously, we will call execute non-query. OK, so that's a simple static method to delete employee. All right, now let's rebuild our project once more. And then let's go back to our web form and then reconfigure this object data source control. Configure data source. And then that's our business object. I click Next. So that's the select method. But look at this. We have Delete tab here. So when I click on the Delete tab, we should see a method here, Delete Employee. OK, and it's taking a parameter into Employee ID. So all you need to do is select that method, click Finish. You're done. Now when we come to the grid view control, look at that. 
I have this option enable deleting. So the moment I select that, I see the delete button there. Now we are done. So if I go ahead and run this now, you know, it it will display the employee related data but then when I click the delete button look at what's going to happen I click delete button now again that's the connection string problem we should have changed that so let's go ahead and change the connection string here the connection string in web.config file is DB connection string not DBCS so let me paste it there let's run it once again So now when I actually click the delete button, you know, it won't delete the row. Look at that. I clicked on delete button. It's not deleting any row. Why is that? That's because, look at this, the, you know, when you click that delete button, you know, the grid view is going to take, the grid view has to take the employee ID of that row and pass it to this, you know, delete employee method but it's not doing that at the moment because we have not told the grid view control which is the primary key okay so basically the way we specify that is by using data key names property so this grid view control has got an attribute called data key names we have to specify that so we have to set data key names is equal to whatever is the primary key. What is the primary key of, for our table? Employee ID. So I need to specify that. So let me copy that and paste it right there. Now if your table has a composite primary key then you can also separate that with comma. So for example in, in some tables you might have maybe first name and last name. The combination of them are going to act as a primary key. If that's the case then you separate them with a comma if you have a composite primary key. But here we have just one column as the primary key so I'm setting that as employee ID. So now let me run this and see what's going to happen. So now since the visit, uh, grid view control knows uh, employee ID as the primary key I click delete button look at that it gets deleted as expected. Okay, now there are actually two ways to specify this data key names property. You can specify that in the HTML declaratively here, or you can also do that in code if you wish to. So look at that, the data key names property is at the grid view level. So I can actually go into the code on the page load. I can say grid view one dot data key names property is equal to look at this when I have on my mouse over this it's actually a string array the data key names so we need to create a new string array of size 1 and I'm going to specify that as employee ID so here we are doing that in code programmatically and again the behavior should be the same except that we are specifying data key names in code rather than declaratively in the HTML so I click delete button and gets deleted all right on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day